Hello everybody. Usually I do a video in the morning when everybody's still sleeping, but that didn't happen this morning. So many weird things happened and I thought how appropriate for today's message. So I went to get my phone when I got it. Well, I got up and I went to go take the dogs for a walk. And well, I got up, did meditating then went to take my dogs for a walk but realized my phone hadn't charged and then somehow there was water in the plug thing i guess because water got onto the little plug that you plug it in and um it uh got water into my my phone so i couldn't take my phone which i always take my phone with me so i couldn't take that so then you know you uh think about well should I go should I not go well I went anyways and took my dogs for a walk and um, came back and it still wouldn't wasn't charged and it still wouldn't charge see how nice this hammock is it's so awesome I got it for my birthday um, anyways so then my son woke up I had to take care of him and do all the stuff that I normally do after I do all my other stuff but it was just a weird morning and sometimes that happens right so I could have blamed and shamed and done whatever oh I could have woke up earlier even though I was up at 4 30 um, I could have like you know blamed people for getting my cord wet or I could have uh, you know done whatever but I chose not to because it feels better to not um, take it personally big 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 thing. Why do we take things so personally? Um, I Think it's habit is where where I'm gonna start with this I think it's definitely habit because when we're a little kid and people are talking about us not knowing how to walk or You know, we don't understand what they're saying, but as we get older we realize the words and if you're empath empathic you feel what they're feeling right so why would they be like putting you down why would they like feel insecure about themselves to put you down and how do you determine now that you don't want to think those thoughts right so I wrote a book life with Matt and I, I went through a whole bunch of stuff with if you have been following me for a long time you know Matt he is my son he is uh, 32 almost 33 and he has uh, disabilities as well as medical issues from the time he was born and we have gone through a lot of different things a lot of different things a lot of labels a lot of a lot of things so I wrote a book and I wrote a book because I wanted to help people, not just people with um, children with disabilities and illness, but also everybody, because a lot of stuff that I go through in the book, that I went through in the book that I wrote about, has stuff to do with what we go through every day. Maybe it's ourselves, maybe it's you know not the same thing but a little different in circumstance but we all go through life changes we all go through um, issues and people telling us you know um, saying things that we really don't like to hear so one of the things I was told from a doctor as Matt was 15 days old so I had already been a mother of my oldest daughter who is um, six years older than Matt. Uh, yeah, six years, five, five years older? Five or six years older than Matt. I think she's six years older. And she was in kindergarten when I was having Matthew. So she's, I guess she's five years older. Anyways, that's right, because then she's six years older than Tegan, and that's my youngest daughter. So anyways, I had already been a mom for five years. And nobody other than when I was pregnant, I was pregnant at 16 and people kept telling me how, you know, I wasn't 
how, how would I know how to take care of a baby and how could I be a good mom and you know all those other things that people worry about when a 16 year old has a baby um, but this doctor told me that the reason he had kept Matt in so long was because he was worried that I wouldn't be giving Matt his medication so this really stung me because I mean like at the time he's a professional right what does he know about me that I don't know about me how how could I possibly forget medication right that's threatening his life right um, that I mean that's not threatening his life that's gonna help his life how am I gonna forget this and so I started doubting myself right so how do we get from hearing things like that to um, to not going through that door you know because it's it's like you're going through that hell door right like I was speaking of the other day about um, heaven and hell right so the thought process and which door are you going through um, and it took me a long time to realize that his opinion of me did not matter now I saw a book in a bookstore years later said your opinion of me does not matter, actually. <laughs> actually, it was what you think of me does not matter. And um, I never read that book. I always wanted to go back and get that book, and I never, ever did. But I loved the thought process. It still took me many, many, many years to realize what that really meant. Because I am such a big caregiver. I am such a big uh, empath. I'm such a big, I just want to give everybody, I want to help everybody, I want to, um, I want to be good, you know, I want to be that, that person, but I gotta move my chair because the sun's going to come right in my area and you won't be able to see me anymore. Okay, so how do I get to be that, you know, that person who's able to help everybody, but still, you know, realize for myself who I want to be? So, I still, even after I was married to my now husband, I still went through a lot of this, and he's a, he's a really good influence also. Um, he would remind me that I don't need to take things so personally. Maybe it's not about me, you know? Maybe because we have differences, that it's okay that we have differences. So, how do you, now I'm going to get to... Um, like, how do you decide that, that it's more important for you to choose you than to choose to um, argue or to believe what that other person is going to say? How do you just not get angry at what they're going to say? Or how do you, um, so for me, uh, a lot of things, so a lot of things have happened in the in the transformation of this. I've been working on this for a while, so, and I don't always get there. Let me tell you, there are times where I have to remind myself, it does not feel good. And you will know if you're going through uh, the door to hell, if it doesn't feel good. If it doesn't feel good, that's where you're heading. That's where you're going. So when I would get frustrated, and I lived up uh, in the country, up in a mountain it was awesome I loved it up there and um, I would just go for a walk I just out I'd go and walk right so last year came well we moved but last year came and I couldn't just go for a walk because we were all in lockdown and in COVID right so then what well I have a treadmill right I have um, meditation and if you can't sit quietly with yourself, that's something to practice. But walking away from the situation, good idea. So say you can't go for a walk, right? Say COVID, right? Say you're restricted to where you're, you're going to be. Take up some planting. Start planting. I, I, have, I, I love planting. I love planting forever. But when I reach in the soil and I... You know, I'm digging through the soil, planting stuff. Oh, I love it. It soothes my soul. Take up a hobby. Take up a hobby. Um, maybe do some writing, right? 
writing is really good. How about dancing? You know, when you're thinking that these people, how dare they do that? Change the tune, start dancing. Who cares? Start, start making you a priority and not them. When you're carrying around them all the time by what they say, you're forgetting about you. So all of the thoughts that they said, all the things that they said and did, right, has very little to do with them and it has everything to do with how you're reacting to it. So take a minute with yourself and sometimes you can't do that right away. So getting in the habit of going for a walk if you can, playing in soil, doing some some hobbies, painting, um, running in your own backyard maybe, taking a hot bath, get out of where you are to do something different. Because when you're sitting in that moment and don't talk to anybody because I can guarantee you that if they're your supporters, they're gonna do everything that they can do to agree with you. They're not gonna turn around to you and say, hey, you know what, if you just change your thought, you might not feel that way. They're gonna help you by, or think they're helping you by agreeing with you. And it's just gonna help you continue down that road. So things I do when I start feeling my, my thoughts, my, we're gonna call it a body brain because that's what I started calling it for myself. When my body brain starts, I used to call it ego, but I started calling it my body brain. So when my body brain starts talking about, you know, something, and um, then I go, okay, is it true? Hmm, is it helpful? And can I do anything about it, right? Sometimes when we're so ticked off, we can't think, we can't think of any questions to ask ourselves, right? So what are you gonna do? Go for a walk. What I do is I go outside with my plants. I go and talk to my dogs, or I go talk to my bird, <laughs> or I just go to my, my room, like, so I have my bedroom, but then I have my, my own room, where I have crystals and everything. And, um, and I just go hang out down there, you know, I take a writing book and I'll just start writing and I won't write what I'm angry about. Instead, I will want to change that thought process to something more pleasant, gratitudes maybe. And maybe it takes you like minutes to grab hold of one gratitude. That's fine. Um, if you love doing a hobby, do a hobby instead. When you stop your body mind from telling you that same story over and over and over again, and it's going to take practice. Believe me, it's going to take practice. Not everything is about you. It's not. It really isn't. And if you could realize that you get to choose your thoughts and you get to choose whether or not you want to carry that person with you. So that doctor who told me, that oh, look at this. Mr. Hummingbird right there. I don't know if you can see him, but he come up real close. Like, come on, how cool is that? He's just hanging out. It's like, oh, you're so awesome. Um, that doctor who told me that I that he didn't trust me with Matthew because he was afraid I was not going to give him the medication. After when Matt was 15 months old. He um, ended up with uh, asthma and ended up with a bad case of asthma. So the same doctor had forgotten that he had a birthmark on his lung and his um, bowel and didn't even check the, the records. And I had forgotten because I had just had Tegan. So Matt was in the hospital for five days. This is the doctor who didn't trust me but totally forgot to look at his notes, right? Or what was going on with Matt. So then I was realizing that his opinion of me really didn't matter because he wasn't even doing his job properly. We all make mistakes and that's all cool. But you gotta, you got to decide, this is a big one, you have to decide that you are more important. Yes, I'll say it again, you are more important in your life. Why are you more important in your life? than anybody else. Because 
if you don't make you a priority, then everybody's just going to walk all over you. Everybody's going to tell you how to live your life. You have to decide for yourself that you are enough because you really are. You have to decide for yourself that it is okay to be you. And if you get angry once in a while, or you get frustrated and you want to be at this place where you don't ever go down there, well, we're all human, so there's going to always be times they're just going to be less and less and less. The more you practice something, the more you practice something, the better you get at it. Whether you're practicing it in your mind, or you're practicing it like physically, it doesn't matter. You're going to get better and better and better the more you do it. We know this from, from school. That's the one thing we learned from school, right? The more we do something, the better we get at it. So the more you practice realizing, the more you practice being more important to yourself, the more you practice not letting others affect you, not taking them personally. Because when you take them personally, no matter who it is, I come from a family of five kids, five of us. I am the middle child. I have two older sisters, a younger sister and a younger brother. And I can tell you for a fact, learning to not take them personally <laughs> was a task. I mean, we love each other, don't get me wrong. We are um, a loving family, but you still get your, you know, from way back from being a child and saying the wrong thing to, you know, at the wrong time because you're just a kid and you don't really know how to use your words. And somebody could hold on to that for a lifetime. But do you want to carry them around with you for all of your life? Like think of all that baggage that your brain is holding on to instead of letting it go and letting love happen. It really is up to you. So the first thing I would say I gave you a whole bunch of different little things, but to sum it up here, the first thing that I would say is make sure that you no longer want to carry anybody around, that you want to be the most important person in your life. That's number one. Number two, what people think of you is none of your business, none of your business. Don't worry about it. They all have issues too. All of them, every single one of them have issues. Don't worry about it. Number three, when you feel you're at the door to hell, walk away. Just go for a walk, play in some dirt, plant a plant, um, play with some clay, do a painting, go for a run, play with the dog, whatever it is you like to do, woodwork, jump on a trampoline, I have one behind me, um, whatever it is that you want to do, do some writing, play a game, play a video game, why not? Whatever it is to get your body mind out of that victim role, the one that you've been repeating over and over and over, out of there, clear your thoughts, do some breathing, listen to some Dr. Joe Dispenza or listen to Abraham Hicks or a hundred other people I listen nonstop every single day. I listen to um, one of them, whoever it is I listen to. I listen to tons of people, but I listen daily to an audio, at least one. And I read a book. I don't read the whole book, obviously, but I do read a few pages. And I de-stress, you know, video games, um, go for a walk, educate why well, I already said that read books and stuff um, soak in a tub whatever it is do dishes clean your house <laughs> whatever it is that you can get out of your body mind and all those yucky feelings to get them out you need to start practicing changing your thoughts as well so this is a big one I mentioned this one a lot in my videos because I didn't realize for the longest time I never realized that I could just change my thoughts, right? It was so interesting. So like just, just a little while ago, we were out here playing and having fun and then um, 
my husband did something and I kind of got like irritated and then I realized it was my own problem so he disagreed with me and I said okay that's fine you know I don't want to argue right so um and he asked me do do I want him to stay out with me and I said no I don't it's okay because I knew well first of all I wanted to do a video but also I knew that I needed to figure me out because it's not his responsibility to change him for me it's my responsibility to change me for me because I'm responsible for me I'm accountable for me I need to make sure that I'm the person I want to be in every minute so that's a big one you know if you are getting frustrated and you're at the door and you don't know who you want to be that might be time for you to sit down and start thinking about who do I want to be who's the best you that you can be and maybe it's being angry and screaming and yelling anger is better than being depressed so and I know I've been there too so sometimes it's okay to be angry just don't take it out on anybody else you know go and scream into a pillow get a punching bag and punch you know like whatever it is you need to do to get rid of that anger do it but know it's your anger no nobody caused your anger but you only you caused your anger so how can you um, stop worrying about what people say pay more attention to what you're saying to you pay more attention to why is it irritating you why is it bugging you and go inside go inside and figure it out because you are responsible for you you're accountable for you and only you can change your life to the one that you want only you can be the very best person that you can be you are amazing you are enough I hope this video helped you and if it did please share it and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't I love you make an amazing day everybody